What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, back at you another week, another video. Today I want to talk about how to build the perfect reptile collection for breeding and turning your hobby into a business. Before we dive into the video, I want to take a look at this girl. This is a 2018 blood. She's a blood boa that I produce. She tend to be more on that kind of lighter side, not so much deep rich reds, which I personally gravitate towards. I really like this kind of palish, uh, salmon tone type of blood boa. I'll see if I can back up, give you guys a better view, and I'll kind of come in for a close up and get off the camera so you can see her face. Typical characteristics of these bloods are the, you know, the, the darker color eyes, this overall red color to their whole body. They're just like a really nice hypo in my opinion. So really cool boas, I gravitate towards them. And I think this is a perfect start to the video of what you should buy in order to build your perfect reptile collection. I'm not saying buy a blood boa, but let's dive into the things you should consider. One of the most common questions I get on social media, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, or even in the YouTube comments is what snake should I buy? That's a big question. It's not a question that I can really answer for you, but I hope that this video will provide you some criteria and some guidelines that can help you better pick what you want to do. So the first question that I ask people all the time is how much money do you have to spend? And this isn't because I want to figure out how much I can sell you. I don't care if you buy from me or from somebody else. It's just a guideline to know, am I looking at $100 snakes or am I looking at $10,000 snakes? Those are two totally different ball games. And if you've watched a lot of my older videos, I would always recommend newer breeders shy away from the more expensive stuff unless you're ready to drop some serious cash. And I'm talking like $50,000 plus cash. Don't do it. You're gonna be a nobody with a whole lot of cool snakes and it's gonna be really hard to get into that industry. Now I'm not saying don't do it completely because there's ways that you can do it, but don't divert, you need diversification. Don't spend all of your money on a couple super high end snakes unless you are cutting edge and you are the first to that market. And that first to that market on a single gene type of animal, not something that is a super expensive morph combo. Those super expensive morph combos, in my opinion, are better suited for established breeders such as myself or other breeders out there who can utilize all that potential and get the most out of those. And I'm not saying you can't, but I wanna dive into all that in this video. So first question, how much money do you have to spend? Second question, really, how much space do you have? Do you have room for five snakes, 10 snakes, 100 snakes? That's a big question that I think I need an answer to because that's where I'm gonna try to spend my X amount of money. The third question I'm gonna ask you is, what do you like? Do you like albinos? Do you like IMGs? Do you like bloods? What are you gravitating towards? I can't just recommend snakes in good conscience and say, yeah, buy this snake because I have it. That's not something I would wanna do. I would rather turn you away and I would rather send you to somebody else if it's not something I have and it's something you want. So once we've established those three, those three questions, that's where I can then start to build a recommendation. The other question that I might add if I, you know, if you're totally new or if I don't know you is, where do you stand in your current level of keeping? Are you completely new to keeping? Are you, have you been in the hobby for 10 years? Do people know who you are? Do people not know who you are? Do you have a good or a bad reputation? All of that is gonna play into the business model of trying to make money by selling and by breeding and selling these animals. So once we've established that, let's just get some type of a criteria out there. Let's say I have $10,000. I'm gonna use round numbers. You can scale this up or down. Uh, you know what, most people aren't gonna have $10,000. Let's say we have $1,000. Most people will have $1,000 to invest into a business. And I'm even gonna maybe give two examples. One will be 1,000, the other will be 10,000. And I'll show you which different approach we can go into. So let's say you have $1,000 and you have room for 10 snakes, more than you can buy for $1,000. But that's good, because when you have babies, let's say you have three babies, three snakes, and they all lay babies, you're gonna need space to house these. So let's say you have 10 snakes, I'm sorry, you have $1,000, room for 10 snakes, and you gravitate towards a blood, blood boas. So what I would probably recommend for you is to buy a 
visual female blood boa. You can probably, in today's current market price, you can pick one up somewhere in the range of $500 to $800, and then I'd say get yourself a het male. That's your $1,000 spend. You get two snakes. Obviously, that's not something that you can, you can get into uh, big time with breeding, but it's a good start. Now, if you wanted more quantity and you wanted to just get into that game, I would recommend maybe you get a couple pairs of hats. You maybe get uh, a, you know, like a, a hypo het blood male and a het blood female, and then you get a het blood another het blood female and just a regular het blood male. For $1,000, you can get yourself started with about four snakes, two males, two females, and for boa constrictors, I always recommend getting a 1.1. So that's one male to one female. I never recommend, like with pythons, you can get away with having one male with multiple females, but you can't really do that with boas successfully. Some people say you can, I haven't been successful at it. So that would be kind of like the start of a blood project. Clearly you can see that $1,000 is not a lot of money if you're looking at spending into a business. And what I wanna do, instead of jumping to the $10,000 range, what I would actually recommend is save up a little bit more or buy the buy a female boa with that money buy yourself like a nice female het hypo het blood or a hypo blood that'll cost you somewhere between five hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars if you wanted to get yourself like a, a blood that's het sharp albino that's gonna be again in that fifteen hundred dollar range that's a way better investment from the long-term perspective for just a little bit more money because then in the future, by the time you're breeding, you're gonna be producing some powerhouse babies. So at least powerhouse in today's market, three years from now, they'll be more common, which is actually a good thing because you'll be able to sell them. So what I would say is if you can spend $2,000, get yourself a double het blood sharp male and get yourself a visual blood female that is also het sharp. What you'll produce from that are babies that are gonna be 66% het for sharp albino, they'll be all 100% het for blood. In, if you are in good shape, you'll hit, the, uh, you'll hit the, the visual blood albino, you'll probably hold that baby back and that's the start of your collection. Or you could sell it, but then that's somewhat short-sighted. You could sell that, probably make yourself three, $4,000. If you get multiples, great, you can make even more and then you re reuse that money to recycle into your collection and build a, a more diverse set of boas. So that's kind of the blood path. If you only had $1,000, I would say stick to your more basic morphs. And why I'm avoiding the 66% het or the possible hets is I think you really need a visual if you're gonna go down the recessive road. So if you're gonna go down the bloods, the leopards, the albinos, you need to have a visual, and then you can pair hets with your visual, but I always prefer to have a visual and a het, or a visual to visual. I, I really try to avoid het to het unless the price point or the availability of the animal is just too far out of reach, which is totally fine. The rationale for that is the babies you make will be more valuable if they're 100% het for that recessive trait. So if you only had $1,000 and you were just liking pretty snakes and you wanted to get yourself into the industry, I would probably recommend, go in, instead of the blood path, I would recommend going into something that's a little bit less expensive if you really only had $1,000. So I would say get yourself you, all of your base morphs, Get yourself a motley, uh, you can get hats in there if you want, but again, it's it's unless they're definite 100% hats, you might be spending more than you need. I'd say get yourself your motleys, your jungles, your hypos. Uh, you know, stay away from the deals that are too good to be true. They usually are, and there's probably something wrong with the animal, but that's kind of the pathway I would go is get your basics, your bread and butters. And the good thing for that is when you produce babies, yes, you'll have a lot, but they'll sell pretty quickly. You gotta remember, just like you may not have a couple thousand dollars to spend on animals to start your collection, others may not either. And bigger names, I'm not, putting myself on a pedestal, but bigger names like myself and a lot of the other folks out there, they're gonna be taking your customers just from the physical views perspective. Until you've built your name, 
you, you're not going to be able to grab those those people from from the more publicly known names. So it's going to be difficult to get into that 500 to 1,000 to 2,000 plus range. Now let's talk about the $10,000 budget. If you have a $10,000 budget, that gives us a lot more wiggle room, or even a 5,000. But let's start with the 10,000. If you have a $10,000 budget, I would recommend sticking with animals that are typically over $1,000 in value per animal, and I would get one or two real, you know, banger animals. Um, and I wouldn't say, I would say stay away from the, the flow of traffic right now, because what is popular right now is going to be overpopulated in three to four years by the time you breed. So when you actually get your return on investment, it's gonna be diluted and you're gonna to need to sell a lot more babies just to even make back your initial investment. So in some sense, this is kind of like, I was gonna say the stock market, but it somewhat is. I mean, people follow trends in the boa world. <clears throat> when everything is going up, snakes going into the rack, but when everything is going up in price and everything is like public and known, people are gonna be buying it. The great thing is for the people who already have that, and that's why I'm saying unless you got $50,000 to spend and you're the first into the market, you're already too late. If you're not first, you're last. So, it, especially in something like this, or you're playing catch up trying to get to that point. But if you're gonna drop big money, you better be ready to be the first, or at least one of the first with that morph, and you better make sure that it's, it's a price that people are willing to pay. It's not just a total reach to, to try to get there. So if you have $10,000, I'd probably say now you're dipping into the next tier. Your fires, your labyrinths, uh, your IMGs, even labyrinths I think are a little bit inflated right now. I think Scoria is really cool. I don't know how their wobble works, but uh, I know that uh, Donnie Rollins from Wicked Scoria, he has had great success with non-wobble Scorias. Uh, I personally never seen a non-wobble Scoria in my possession or in person. They've all wobbled for me, but I know he's doing cool stuff with it. I can't knock it. Uh, Scoria, I think, has kind of tapped out and it's at its it's at its sweet spot right now, which is I think around the three to four thousand dollar range. Once you start adding morphs, it's a little bit more. But if you tap into something like that. The problem with these incomplete dominant morphs is it's very easy to overpopulate and oversaturate a market. So if I get an incomplete dominant morph like a Scoria, in three to four years, I could have hundreds of those, thousands of them if I plan myself accordingly and I plan things right. So the same way you could have thousands of them, I can have thousands of them too. And there's a better chance of me having thousands of them than you because I have all these adult breeders that I can pump them into and they're, again, they're incomplete dominant. So unlike a recessive like the blood, which is why the recessive morphs are so stable, is people tend to chase the quick buck. They're going after things that can be made very popular or they can populate very quickly and can get to the market and get your return quickly. So something like a, a recessive, like a leopard or a blood or an albino, those have somewhat stabilized because they're more they're di more difficult. You need a male and a female or you need hets to make that work. Things like IMG, fire, uh, uh, Mot Motley is a perfect example. Motley is a snake that went from thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars in a matter of only a couple years because everybody loved them. They're awesome snakes, but they've basically bottomed out. Why Motley isn't a bad investment now is because it's at the bottom. You can't lose. If you spend $150, $200 on a Motley, five years from now, it's still going to be worth $150, $200, if not more because the market tends to go up for these base morphs that have bottomed out. There's kind of a limit where people are like, it's not worth producing unless I'm gonna make X amount on it. And that's kind of where it would go. Now, the other path you could take yourself is out of the morph game and into localities. I would say that's okay, especially if you have money to do it. And if you have that $10,000 budget, dabble in some locality but I wouldn't go there to start with because that market, at least in my opinion, is fairly unstable right now. A lot of people are trying to get into it and a lot of people are trying to make money. So if you don't know what you're doing, stay away from that for right now. Buy them because you like them and you want them as pets and you may want to breed them in the future, but don't build your business model around that, in my opinion, unless you're going to go 
all head first into the locality market. In that case, that's a different, different standpoint, but don't dabble in it. It's not a market that you can dabble in. It's a market that you need to own or you need to be established in, in a morph type of situation. So I know this video wasn't super direct and super clear, but hopefully you guys can read between the lines because this is something that I feel is, is important to understand holistically that when you're spending money and you do want to turn this into an investment, you need to invest smart and you can't just go throwing money. Just like you wouldn't just go throw money into a stock market, maybe some of you would, but if you don't understand the market, you're probably going to lose your money and spend a lot of time and in the process just become discouraged and get away from it. That's not the goal. The goal is to enjoy this. This is a hobby first and an industry second, in my opinion. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, give it the thumbs up, like it, sub share, subscribe to this channel. And if you want, check out my Patreon page. It's a kind of community that I'm building. I would say, you know, there's all different tiers ranging from $3 to, I think, $300. Those tiers get you one-on-one -on -one time with me. Those tiers get you kind of just a general support for this channel. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be making these videos as regularly as I am. So until next week, I appreciate you guys watching, following, subscribing. Hopefully this video helped you and keep it moving.